Bonjour! Welcome to Natalingo's Natter with Natalie Paris. So what has happened in the classroom? I was inspired to try out this activity by Rachel Hawkes, whose website is attached in the notes to this podcast. Rachel was a keynote speaker at both Language World in March 2018 and UK Lingua in April 2018 and she was talking about the Language Futures project which was um, a research-based project and one of the findings was that giving the children more choice led to more engagement and motivation. So I've been thinking a lot about when I could give my pupils more options and more choice in their work. So my year five has just started to learn about places in town and finding their way round town. One of the introductory lessons to this topic, I played to them a video of Chateau Thierry, which is their partner school. I asked the pupils to write down a list of what they could see in the video. That was the first element of choice. They wrote down what they wanted. Then I asked them to look at their list and choose the words which they wanted to know in French. Then this led to some dictionary work. They recorded what those words meant in their French, whether those nouns were masculine or feminine. So this would lead on to some work about saying what there is and the prison in the town and then where they go as well. So different grammar work from them. The result was the children were much more engaged with their dictionary work than they normally do and they were very engaged with watching the video as well. So this was a great activity which I would replicate in a different context. I would now like to talk about flashcards. Save the flashcards. Now, I am a big fan in this technology world of uh, using the good old fashioned flashcards because children like that they can see them and especially that they can touch them, they can hold them, we can do a lot of things with them. So I would like to share mine and my pupils' top three activities to use in the classroom with flashcards. The first one I call Guess the Flashcards. We have two teams, A and B, and each team takes it in turns to try and guess a flashcard which I am holding in a way that they can't see it. The element of luck in this activity encourages everyone to take part, even those children who might think they're not as good as others. And it often happens that those children are the ones who guess the correct word, phrase or sentence which you have associated with that flashcard. I don't want people to think that flashcards are just to be used at word level. I use, for instance, a flashcard of a bus, maybe to introduce vocabulary to do with public transport, so a bus, but then it might evolve to the children having to produce the sentence je vais à l'école en bus in order to get the point in any game that we might be able to play. So to get back to my guess the flashcards game, we normally do best of three or best of five, at which point I ask the children who have guessed and won a flashcard. It is very important to the children that they actually get to hold the flashcard that they won. The children who have won flashcards get sent outside along with maybe a handful of other children. So you have as many children from each team going outside and changing the card that they are holding. So for instance, if they were holding a card of a bus for the next activity, they might want to choose to the card representing a car. The reason why I send an equal number of uh, children from each team is when they come back and the face the classroom whilst holding a card which they hide from the rest of the classroom, I will get the children from team A to try and guess the card which the children in team B are holding and vice versa. This uh, minimizes cheating because yes, children, some of them 
will try to cheat. Once um, I have those children lining up facing the class, we will start with one of those from team A and the children in team B only at that point will try to guess what card that child has. I will normally give them three goes. If they guess on the first attempt, they get three points. On the second attempt, they get two points. On the third attempt, they only get one point. If they haven't guessed by then, the person from team A who's holding the card wins two points for their team. After this, we'll move on to the next person from team B and only team A will get to try to guess what card that person has. I hope this is making sense. This is the favourite part of the game for the children when they get to stand in front of the class with their card and the team opposite to theirs has got to try and guess what card they have. This also encourages the children who are sitting there who might not have been taking part as much to contribute a lot more this time round. Our second favourite guess I got the idea from uh, Claire Seccombe's Changing Phase blog post that she wrote a few years back about activities to do with flashcards. I will attach a link to her blog to this podcast. And what you need for this activity is some cards with numbers on them. It could be numbers 1 to 10 and numbers from minus 1 to minus 10 or a selection of those. You then stick those cards with numbers on them randomly on the blackboard but you also stick in front of each one of those cards one of your clash cards. So in our example they might have some means of transport on them. You must not let the children see which number is associated with which card because in two teams again A and B they will take it in turns to choose one of of the flashcards, say it in French or whatever language you're teaching. So for instance, je vais à l'école en bus. If they say it correctly, you remove the flashcard with the picture on it to reveal how many points that card gets to the team. Now again, it is a very funny game because it might not be the most skilled children who will take part because there is an element of look and the children with the best accents might not necessarily win the game for their teams because they might get minus three for their team depending on which card they have chosen. Our third favourite game I call the detective game. I have bought two very bright hats, a yellow one and a green one, which two chosen detectives get to wear and leave the classroom with, whilst with the other children we choose a person who will do a secret sign. It it could be, for instance, they will put their hair behind their ear. When the detectives come back in, we'll use the flashcards for choral repetition. So we might say, je vais à l'école en bus, repeatedly as a class until the chosen person does the secret sign, at which point I will change to another flashcard and the whole of the class will move on to, je vais à l'école en voiture je vais à l'école en voiture and keep repeating that until again the person doing the secret sign does that secret sign. The detective's jobs is just to try and work out who is deciding when I change the flashcards. Once we've gone through all the flashcards, we'll give them a chance to stand behind who they think was doing the secret sign and uh, it is fantastic for choral repetition a lot of practice without the children really realising it because they just get so caught up in being detectives or trying to pretend that they are doing the secret sign. They have so much fun, but it teaches them so much. So what are your favourite games to do with flashcards? Please mention in the comments what they are and share them with us all. Thanks for listening. Please give me some feedback. I am always open to suggestions for future episodes. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so already, of course. Au revoir!
That was Natalie Paris in episode one of Natalingo's Natter.